Hello and welcome back to The Stacked and here are today's top stories. The first story, some great news out of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court issued various rulings today and one of the bombshell SCOTUS rulings was the right to carry rules being established, the right to carry being established across the entire nation. That's basically, from what we can tell, the precedent that was just set, according to a majority opinion written by the great Justice Clarence Thomas. He said, quote, nothing in the Second Amendment's text draws a home slash public distinction with respect to the right to keep and bear arms. The definition of bear naturally encompasses public carry. So this ruling was striking down a New York gun control law that required people to show proper cause to get a license to carry a concealed handgun outside of a home. Of course, that law is absurd, totally something you expect out of New York, but Justice Thomas is saying, look, that law is unconstitutional and Americans totally have the right to keep and bear arms outside the home and that encompasses the right to public carry. So I think this is great news for every uh, American who wants to carry a gun to protect themselves, especially in these dangerous times that we're living in. So this is a really great, encouraging ruling, and let's hope that the next ruling overturns Roe v. Wade. And then the second story is Congress preparing for a new POTUS before 2024. There are some revisions being made to the U.S. code that have some people wondering. Joe Biden, he says he fully intends to run for re-election in 2024. Joe Biden is quite old. There are many questions about his health. It would not be absurd to say that it's kind of questionable whether or not Biden will make it to 2024. So who would the likely nominee be? Well, it would be Kamala Harris or maybe even Pete Buttigieg or, you know, some other Democrat. Either way, total disaster for the Democrats. So there is this proposal, the 21st Century Presidency Act, that would change gender specific terms such as wife and widow to gender neutral terms. I hate using the words gender neutral. FYI, uh, to spouse and surviving spouse. And specifically, these revisions would occur in a part of the U.S. code which pertains to threats against former presidents and certain other persons. The language currently reads the wife of a former president during his lifetime, the widow of a former president until her death or remarriage. This would be replaced with the spouse of a former president during a former president's lifetime, the surviving spouse of a former president until the surviving spouse's death or remarriage marriage. Um, so, you know, there's something crazy about this. The changes are appropriate. Um, you know, sure. Should a woman become president, her husband would be provided for. That's basically what it says. But what people are wondering about is the timing of this bill. Why now of all times when Joe Biden is president? Well, who could potentially become the next president either before 2024 or in 2024? Well, it would be Kamala Harris or Pete Buttigieg. Kamala Harris is a woman. Democrats don't know what a woman is, but I'm pretty sure Kamala Harris is. And Pete Buttigieg is a gay man. So it's just really interesting this is happening right now. Maybe Joe Biden isn't going to make it full term. And the third story, I think one of the most alarming things happening in America right now is Bill Gates buying up all the farmland that he's buying up. We also see companies like BlackRock buying up entire neighborhoods across America. You see this taking of private property, private ownership of land from Americans to the hands of the elite. And that's never a good thing. So Bill Gates is actually the single largest private farmland owner in the United States. Again, that should alarm you. So he's accumulated a total of 242 thousand acres and he just bought up a massive amount of land in north dakota now and north dakota's attorney general is stepping in he is looking into how gates intends to use or hoard the land that he purchased in the state north dakota law restricts the ownership and leasing of farmland to corporations and limited liability companies in addition there are certain limitations with regards to trust so we'll see if he can prove 
why he's using the land. If Gates is unable to demonstrate that he's using the land in accordance with state law, he faces a $100,000 fine unless the trust divests from the land within one year. So this is great. We need more Republicans, more elected officials to step in when people like Bill Gates try to take farmland from good American farmers for their own use. I cannot imagine that Bill Gates buying up farmland is a good thing. So if you want to stay up to date on the latest Bill Gates news, the latest on whether or not Biden will make it through his presidency, and the latest on Supreme Court decisions, you can head to westernjournal.com and please be sure to like and subscribe so you never miss an episode of The Stack.